Everybody got something. Uh, Brother Anthony, do me a favor and get these lights on for me, bro. Just hit that switch, amen. Everybody watch your eyes because I don't have a dimmer switch. Praise God. How many of us love God? Amen. How many of us saw the football game today? Amen. Can't do Man, I'm amazed. I got saved. I don't even care about football no more. <laughs> it really. I was so every, I mean, ask Brittany, if I did not see the kickoff for every game, I was mad all day long. Whether we won or lost if I didn't see kickoff. How many of us know today was an important game? I'm going somewhere here. Y'all can tell already, can't you? Today was an important game between Alabama and Auburn, and millions and millions of fans watched across the nation. How many of us know that we play a game every day and we don't take it as serious as the football game? Alabama and Auburn, their rivals. God and Satan. The rivals. But that Alabama and Auburn game, who, no matter who wins, no matter who loses, it's just a game. Right. It don't matter with that game. But yet people bet thousands and millions of dollars on that game. Amen? People will throw beer bottles at your car just because their team won and your team lost. They'll run you off the road trying to get out of that game because you got a certain sign on the front of your car. And everybody takes that game so serious. College football, they take really serious. Listen to this. High school football, they take really serious down here in the South. Pro football, they take really serious down here in the South. Baseball up north, they get really serious of it. Other countries, soccer, they get really serious over those games. God got to show me yesterday, I was studying, He got to show me yesterday that every game in life, let me tell you something, poker is on TV. And they will get fighting mad over that game. It's just a game. And none of these games can get you to heaven or to hell. Well, let me back up. They can get you to hell. Because they get you sidetracked to the point where you can't get your mind on Jesus. Amen? It's just a game. But we play a game every morning when we wake up. We play Russian roulette every day when we wake up. We have choices to make with our spiritual life as a Christian. Every day we wake up and there's a battle going on in your mind. Every morning when you get up, Jay, you got to make a decision. Am I going to do this or am I going to do this? Am I going to walk down this path today or am I going to walk down that path today? And that game is the game that can cost you your life. And you don't even take it quite as serious as you do a football game. That's sad. This year, I'm glad to say I haven't seen the kickoff not to one football game. Because it consumed me. I remember last year being at work in Alabama and Auburn played on a, a really off day. And I'm like, what in the world? I was one of the biggest Alabama fans you've seen. I said, was. Because I'm a Jesus fan now. I still like Alabama football. I am not like, I'm not lacking there in that area. But when they lost today, it didn't bother me. Last year when they was losing and we had to come back on the, on, on the back end and come back and win, I was throwing stuff in my office. Why, as Christians, can we not be that serious with our walk with God? And even worse, there are sinners out there right now that are playing an even dangerous, a more dangerous game than we are, and we as Christians are not even out there doing nothing about it. 
Did you know that when you give your life to God and God anointed you, guess what? He appointed you. Oh my God, that devil's wanting to act up and God's going to use it to get the Holy Ghost running there. You watch. Somebody's going to jump and get scared and the Holy Ghost won't go all over somebody. All because of a microphone. But when God anointed you, He appointed you. And he appointed you to play one of the biggest football games you'll ever play in your life. He anointed you to play the biggest basketball game you'll ever play in your life. When you wake up in the morning times, you say, God, which way do I need to go? And he'll direct your path and you're going to find some homeless guy sitting on the side of the road. What do you do with the football at that point? Because you have the ball. See, because many Christians have seen a homeless guy sitting there, and this is the truth. We have been taking advantage of so much that we won't even try to help that brother. We'll walk right on past him and move on. Even so, more than that, this wasn't my message. I started in one area, and God's kind of like, Shh, got me cutting off going to another direction. But more than that, how many of us ministered to somebody this week? How many of us told somebody about Jesus standing in Walmart, in the line, in the grocery store? And if you told them about Jesus, did you tell them the proper way? Corey was riding down the road with me yesterday and he says, Daddy, you know what's wrong with churches? I said, what's wrong with churches, buddy? He said, they don't teach how to minister. They tell you you're supposed to minister, but they don't teach you discipleship. He said, Daddy, I was upset. He says, almost all my friends were Christians and not one of them tried to tell me about Jesus. He said, I had one of my friends yesterday. I called her up and said, I just want to tell you, Jesus loves you. And she said, that's a what kind of question? Well, that's kind of random. He said, no, it's not random. I just want you to know Jesus loves you. She's a Christian. And he says, Daddy, I felt that I needed to teach her how to minister to other people. How many of us know how to discipleship? How many of us know the proper way of ministering to a lost soul? That's sad. It's sad, brother. There are so many Christians out there that are Christians that love God, and God has done so much for them in their life, and they don't have joy in their life, enough joy to be able to say, well, let me tell you what God done for me. You ain't got to try to get them saved. All you got to do is tell them what God done for you. And we play this game every day when we get up. And you're on a team. You're on a winning team. We already know the answer to the book. We already know we're winning. You're a winner. Okay, God. I say this all the time so some of y'all that are around me are going to know this story, but for those of you that are not around me, you're not going to know this story. And I'm fixing to get a little orthodox here. I'm fixing to go somewhere here that God just told me to go, and I don't know how to go here except for to be blunt with it. When you was conceived between your mother and your father, oh my God, I was sitting here going, bro, the rest of fixing to get caught with it. Watch this, brother. Let me tell you something. When you was conceived, when you was conceived, when you was conceived, listen to me, your mother and your father had relationships. I'm trying to be nice about this. Preachers don't preach on this area at all. But I'm just crazy enough to eat little honeycomb and wild locusts to tell you just like it is. But your mama and your daddy had relations. How do I say this, God? And when your daddy 
got satisfied. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out how to put this. When your daddy got satisfied and you was heading to the egg, how many of us know what I'm talking about? When a woman gets pregnant, huh? when a girl gets pregnant, that seed is running towards that egg. And guess what? You got a thousand or maybe two thousand brothers and sisters running right behind you, straight to the egg, and you are racing. And guess what? Out of them 2,000 other seeds that was running that egg, brother, you won. You was a winner. You was the one that got there first. You was a winner from birth. God has put you on this planet because you are a winner. And because you are a winner, when you see that homeless person sitting on the ground, it is your duty as a Christian to minister the word of God to that man and say, guess what God did to me because I am a winner and so are you a winner. You was conceived, you was born for a reason. This was not my message. But we play a game every day and every day we get up, we should say as a Christian, who can I help? I was not an accident. God planned me. Mom and daddy might not have expected me to come forth, but my God planned it. The Bible says that you was predestined. Before you even come out your mother's womb, listen to me. God knows how many hairs you have on your head. You're important to God. You may not be important to nobody else in this world, but God sees your heart and God loves you. And this game that we play every day, my God, where am I going? Every day we play this game and we get out of the bed and we sidestep what we're supposed to do as a Christian. I feel God rumbling so deep inside me right now. I was wanting to pre preach on Paul. When Paul got locked up and he shackled down and he got to praising God and an earthquake came. But something happened and it was a shift that took place, brother, when you walked in the room, listen to me. When you walked up in the room and I seen your hand go up in the air, that was a shift that took place. And I seen angels singing because you are important to God. You're important to God. I don't care what happened to you in your past. You need to listen to me. I don't care what happened to you in your past. It's your future that God is concerned with. It's the end of the book, brother Tony, that God is concerned with. God is concerned about are you going to be there on judgment day and what is that judgment going to be? He wants you to know that you are a winner and if you don't play this ball game right, you're going to fail. You're going to miss it. I just preach Tuesday night get your eyes on Jesus because we are in the end time. And so many of us allow the enemy to tell us that we ain't nothing. Well, I ain't got the job I need to have. I don't guess it's meant for me to ever make money. Come on, listen to me. Well, I'm just a poor, broke down woman. What can I do? I'm just a poor, broke down man. What can I do? Well, I just live out on the streets and I have to hustle for my money. What can I do? and put your eyes straight up into heaven and start calling out to Jesus and I promise you he'll bring you out of it. When you feel like you're at the end of your rope, you tie a knot in the end of your rope and you hold on. I had to hold on for five years, brother. You need to listen to me. I had to tie a knot in the end of my rope and I held on for five years out of faith that God was coming to get me. 